Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for my webinar on three steps to success in dog agility and building your agility toolbox. So when I'm talking about our agility toolbox, I'm talking about the, the things that we really need to help us and our dogs get to running agility in competition. Um, it's all about the things we need to really make us a successful team. So the three things that I find that are fundamental to all good teams are laying a great foundation, the three C's and handling techniques. So if we want to talk about building our agility toolbox, you go, what actually is that? And it really is an idea of a concept of how we look at the skills we need for our agility team. So I like to think of our toolbox as all the things we need to put into ourselves and our team to help us become a successful partnership and to be able to have fun doing agility. So if we have a look at the first step of building our toolbox, and that's laying a great foundation. Now, I like to think of foundation skills as the skills we have that are going to create the box that we have our tools in. So think of our toolbox, our foundation skills are going to be that hard outside shell that we carry all of our other tools in. And so without a great foundation or a great outside shell of our toolbox, then all the other things that we put in there can fall through the cracks. And so I really like to think of our foundation skills as vital to being able to carry all the other skills or tools that we put into our toolbox. When you get the emails that follow this webinar and we do a deep dive into all of these topics, I'll go through and give you a little sneak peek at our foundation program. And what you'll find in there is over 77 lessons, all on foundation skills. And what we do is we set it up in such a way that you can start at the beginning and just follow the lesson plan through and it will slowly build layer upon layer on your foundation skills to get to the point where you can be running sequences with your dog. And so while there are lots and lots of lessons in there, there are four skills here that I really want you to concentrate on. And these are the skills that are really going to help you on course later on in your agility career. So the first one is jump offering. Now I've got a little video that I'm going to show you with my Border Collie Drift and my older dog Rain. Now jump offering is a skill I didn't do much of when I first started doing agility and it's the one thing now that I really teach my dogs well because what we want them to do is be able to see a jump and whenever they see a jump they think about taking it and so that way we don't have to run up to every obstacle with our dog. We really want them to be able to start to search the environment for it. So I'm just gonna play this video and it's gonna th show three different stages of jump offering. So this is Baby Border Collie Drift and he's about 12 weeks old here and he's learning how to offer the skill of just going through the upright. And I'm just rewarding him for that effort. And so I'm not luring him, I'm just letting him decide that if he comes around that outside of that wing, he's going to get a nice treat. And so he likes his food. And so he thinks this is a really fun game. There he goes. He's a good boy. Now this is drift at about four months old. And you can see that the wings a bit further away and you can see he's a bit more readily offering to take that wing. Now, most people stop their training at this level because I think, oh yeah, my dog can offer the jump. They're doing great. They don't take it any further than this. And what I want you to concentrate on to have really great success is taking it further. And so here you can see my dog, Rain. She can offer this jump at quite a distance without me doing anything at all. And so she understands the skill of if it jumps out there, then it's okay for her to take it. And so that's some really great skills to have. And this is where I want you to think about building your level of foundation too, not just doing a little bit of foundation and then moving on, but really deep diving into the foundation skills and building them to a level that's going to help you be more successful down the track in agility. So that was of the jump offering. Now, the next skill 
I really want you to, to consider is the forward focus skill. It's also one that I didn't do much of when I started doing agility training and it was definitely to my detriment. I'm not the fastest person in the world and my dog, especially Drift, is much faster than me already. And so I really want him to have great forward focus so that I can send him places and he's looking at the obstacles in front of him and not necessarily looking at me. And this will help him be able to tackle the agility course without me having to be right by his side. And so most of us, the dogs are faster than we are. And so we want to be able to send our dog somewhere and then move to the next thing. And so if we have our dog forward focused, we can definitely do that. So let's have a look at Drift, learning some forward focus. Here in the foundation program, you'll first learn to have your puppy focusing forward to either a toy or a food bowl or a food toy. And so we just want to teach them to be able to go out and take that reward. And so that's helping them focus forward and not on us. You can also see I'm tossing a bit of a treat here just to help get him some momentum through the move. There you can see he had a little look at me and then drove to the, the food bowl. Here when I had a helper, which is Nikki, um, we used my food toy and then was driving him to that. And here he's about 14 weeks old. And so you can see we're just having him focus on that lotus ball and drive towards it. So learning that he can focus forward and not necessarily looking at me all the time. You can see here he has a little look at me still. And so it's a skill that develops over time. Here Drift is about five months old. And you can see he's got much better forward focus skills and he's really driving towards that treat ball. And here he's about six or seven months old. And now I haven't got the treat out the, there as a lure and look at him driving forward and then I throw the toy forward. So this skill develops over time, but this, I just wanted to show you the progression that we do in our foundation program to help our dogs learn to forward focus so that they're not looking at us between every obstacle. And this makes agility a lot of fun when you can have your dog forward focus like this and I don't have to run all that hard. <laughs> and he can forward focus. And you can see we just do a little front cross here. And then he drives home without looking at me at all. And so these are the skills that are really important to me and really help make you successful in dog agility. The next skill I have here is the staying committed skill. And this is the skill that will be really helpful for for those of you that don't run a lot or can't run a lot. And so when I say staying committed, it means when we send the dog to an obstacle and they commit, they stay committed no matter what we do next. And so you might have heard the term, it's not how fast you can run, it's how early you can leave. This is where we teach that skill. And so if we can teach our dog to stay committed no matter what our body language is doing, or what our body movement is doing, I should say, then it's a really important skill to have because it allows you to leave early and get to the next critical point, even if you can't run fast to get there. So this is a really, really important skill, especially for those of us that don't run well. And so I've got this little video of drift and I teach the staying committed thing on wings. And so you can use a garbage can, a chair, anything that'll help you send around. And you can see here, he picked this up really early. This was his first ever session of offering a wing. And he knows how to go around things because he's learnt, you know, if we're doing stuff like this, he's just going to offer something and he'll get the reward. And you can see there, I'm just helping him find what I'm asking him. And so there's no sort of movement at the moment. I'm just teaching him what to expect. And then over time we build this up so I can start to send him from further away and I can move away much earlier. So you'll see the next video, this is drift again around that four or five months of age. You can see I can send from further distance away. And also you'll see I start to move away as he commits to the obstacle. And so you can see here, I toss food again to help set that motion up. 
So there I can start to move away. And so I would do this skill regularly and move away earlier and earlier so that he starts to see the picture of me sending him and me going so that he can stay committed while I move away to do the next thing. And so this is, again, another important skill that we really want to lay our foundations with. So the last one of our um, foundation skills that I really want to put in to the toolbox early is the start line stay. Now we have, it's a common question we get about how to teach our start line stay, how to fix our start line stays. And so if you keep an eye out, we will hopefully be doing some more information on start line stays coming in the near future. However, it's a skill that you want to start early and you want to pay attention to because what tends to happen over time is we let our dogs get away with breaking their start line stays and then it deteriorates over time. So it's definitely a skill that we'll talk about in our uh, follow up emails. So hopefully you can learn more about it there. And there's always you can always send us questions into support at One Mind Dogs so that you can get some answers there if you're having any issues with your start line stay currently. Next, we have the three C's. Now, if the foundation skills are the outside of our toolbox and our sturdy outside, then the three C's are the lining of the toolbox. They're the things that are going to influence all the tools that go into the box next. And so we have our foundation skills as our solid outside, and then we have the three C's as our core lining that underpins everything that we do in agility. And so the three C's, and if you've been with us before, you'll have heard us say it's connect, commit, and cue. And so these are at the heart of the One Mind Dogs method. And if you use the three C's between every obstacle, it makes reading the course easy for the dog. And so I have a little video from uh, One Mind Dog coach Yako, and he's talking about dog agility and how easy dog agility is. As in course walking, it's like the three C's. And they stand for connection, commitment, cue. And that means that those three things should happen between every obstacle. If one is missing, obstacle. you will make a mistake. One is missing, that's it. You will make a mistake. <laughs> that's that's, that's it. just simple. So that's, that's staying in connected with the handler so is that's the basic need of the dog. If there is no connection, the dog is not taking instructions from you at all. So your responsibility is to stay connected so that then the dog can try to figure out what's the next obstacle and focus on that. When the dog figures out it, based on your connection, the dog commits. Connection. Commitment for us means that that exact moment in time when the dog knows what is the next right option. After the commitment, you should give a proactive cue, which is basically everything you tell the dog. So I do that connection commitment cue between every obstacle, and I. I can have a checklist to me that if my handling is good. It doesn't matter what handling move it is, because handling move is always only the cue. The connection and commitment part is like, it just happens before the cue. It always happens in that order also. That's agility. If you can repeat that 20 times in each course, and your dog knows how to perform obstacles, you do clear around every time. Just that simple. You understand? If there is connection, you your dog knows where to go. If there is a right obstacle, she go. commits that. If there's a and right when you give a cue what to do with after that obstacle, she stays on the perfect line. 
And if you repeat that 20 times in a course, you repeat around every time. So if the obstacle performance is there, if your dog knows how to weave, your dog knows how to make contact, your dog knows how to perform tunnel and blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Activity. In a nutshell. Yeah, exactly. In a nutshell. Yeah. This was the video that I first watched when I started training with my mind dogs and it changed how I approached agility completely. And so I love, love that, that video. So if we go into depth on the three C's, the first one is connection. And you can see from the picture, connection is basically when we have that visual with our dog. And so it does not need to always be full eye contact, like I'm giving drift here in this picture. It can just be the side of your face. The dogs will read which side of your face is showing, and that's the side that they're going to connect on. So what I want you to think about with connection, um, it's like Yako says, it's like a phone call. So if, you've, if you're on a phone call and the connection is good, then you can have a clear understanding and clear communication between each other, and there is no confusion about what's happening. If there's a disruption on the line and there's a bit of static or something, then sometimes it's hard to hear, you can't quite understand what they're talking about, and then you get a little frustrated because you can't hear and the communication is is a bit off. And so you get frustrated and then things start to break down. And then if the call drops out, there is absolutely no communication at all. And so that's how I want you to think about connection. If you want clear communication with your dog so they can understand where to go next, then you need to give that connection. If you drop that connection, then your dog is going to try and reconnect with you and that's when things go wrong on course. The next is commitment. And this is one of the things that people find the hardest to, one, understand, and also two, to see in real life. So commitment is the time at which the dog understands which obstacle it's going to take. And that doesn't depend on, on distance away from the obstacle. So there's not a certain distance from the obstacle that a dog will commit. It is the time at which the dog sees the connection from you and then looks towards the obstacle they're going to take. And when they look towards that obstacle, that's when you know they start, they're committed. You can then see they go, oh, I know it's that jump, okay? They commit. And so it is the hardest thing to read and on course and it takes some practice. And that's why I love training my dogs because that's when you get to practice all of these skills. So I have a little video to show you of one of my students, the lovely Carol with Luna. And here she was doing a guided course with me. And here you can see she, the dog comes out, Luna comes out of the tunnel and she has really good connection there. You can see she connects with the dog. The dog's looking at her at the moment. However, she cues the blind cross before Luna commits to the jump. And so you can see she Luna just reads the blind cross towards and comes towards her. And so at that point in time, Carol had seen the com connection, but didn't wait for commitment. Here you can see when she does it again, Again, she has great connection with Luna out of the tunnel. However, she now waits until she sees commitment there. You can see there, Luna is looking at the jump. There is no chance she's going to pull off. And so she cues the blind cross. And so that is basically the agility in a nutshell right there in that picture. She was connecting out of the tunnel. She was waited for commitment. When she saw commitment, she then cued where to go next. And so that leads us to the third C, and that's Q. And so basically what Q means is all the information the dog needs to know where it's going next. So once you have connection and you see the dog commit to the obstacle they need to take, we then need to tell the dog where they're going next. And that allows your dog to prepare itself to do that next move. So you can see in this picture of Storm, she's taking this jump and next is this tunnel um, in the background. And so you can see here, I've sent her, I've seen her commitment to the obstacle 
And now my motion's going towards the tunnel. My chest is going towards the tunnel. My feet are going towards the tunnel. I have connection with her and my arm is helping her stay committed to the obstacle. But everything else is saying, go towards the tunnel next. And so she was able to take this jump in a nice slicing line and drive towards the tunnel. And so that's all the information they need to be able to move to the next phase and take the next obstacle. So that is the three C's in a nutshell, basically. And they're the layering of our toolbox. So the next thing we want to talk about, um, and it's the third step of having a successful uh, agility career, is the handling techniques. So we've had our foundation building our tool toolbox. Our three C's have laid our toolbox. So we've got a really nice, strong box to put our tools in. And so I like to think of the tools we have as the different handling techniques that we have going forward. And so they're the tools that are going into our toolbox. So why do we need different toolbox tools? So I like to think of it as having handling options. You have them because you need to be able to show your dog around the course. You need to make sure that dogs are safe on course and you have every dog is slightly different. And so not all handling techniques suit all dogs. And so you want to have enough handling techniques in your toolbox to suit you and your team. So I'm just going to show a little video here. And this is why we have different handling techniques. So you can see here, there's going to be the same, same handling technique, which is a force front cross with slightly different endings for different ways to exit this one jump. So that was a forced front cross. This is going to be a forced front cross Yako. And then followed by a forced front cross to front cross. And so these all have the same approach to the jump, but they all exit the jump differently. So you have to be able to handle that in a slightly different way. So we have a different handling technique for each of those exits. That was just a straight forced front cross. This next one is going to be a forced front cross Yako, which means we want the dog to exit sharply. And then we want to keep the dog on our left hand side going over the next obstacle. The next one is a forced front cross front cross, which means we want the dog to exit sharply out of this jump. However, we want to change the dog onto our right hand side. And so we do that handling there. So these are why we have handling options. And it's to, sh to show the dog how we want them to perform the obstacle. So what handling techniques do you need? When you're first starting out your agility career, everybody thinks about what they might want to do, all the different options they might have. And so I have a little video to show you, to give you a little sneak peek about the handling options and the handling techniques we have on the website. So this will give you an idea of the things we have on the premium website. So here we have our handling techniques section and you'll see that there are 244 different lessons in here. So this is an idea of how much learning there is. And so when we scroll down, you can see there's a front cross, backside send, false turn, reverse spin. We have all of our handling techniques listed here. So when you come onto the website, each of these handling techniques have show you how to teach them, how to do them, and give you different sequences and course maps to be able to practice running them. And so this is the core of our handling technique section you can see with the front cross you go in there there's like 26 different lessons in there on how to do the front cross the footwork how to teach it applying it in the sequence and lots of different other lessons to learn all about the front cross so you can really do a deep dive into each of the techniques 
So I just wanted to show you what's available on the website in terms of learning the techniques. So when you first start out your agility career, I like to think of most, most courses, novice courses, starter courses, you can do with these five core handling techniques. Yes, there's lots of other ones to learn. However, these are the really fundamental techniques that most courses, even all the way up to World Agility Championships, will have these variations. So these are the five techniques that I would be spending most of my time really getting practiced on and learning well. So they're the front cross, blind cross, rear cross, backside send and reverse spin. Now, when it comes to learning with us, I'm just going to show you a video on some of the things you can expect to see if you're learning, say, the front cross with us. And so here you can see you've got a video that's showing you the handler line, the dog's line, so that you can really deep dive into the fundamentals of how each of these techniques work and the lines that they create. And then you can see we can show you how the footwork goes so that you can really start to study how your body works during this process. You can see the different types of approach and exit lines for the front cross. And then the front cross goes into explanation about what a front cross is and why you would use one. So front crosses are used basically when you want your dog to do some collection um, and it can be used to cue a tight turn or to get a little bit of collection on straight lines as well. And then it gives you some examples of front crosses. Miko is known as our king of front cross because his footwork is just amazing. And then it shows you the seven handling elements which break down how to do the front cross. So that's basically how we learn to do the handling techniques. And every dog is different and not all handling suits all dogs. So we need to make sure that you have enough of the handling techniques with you um, that you can pick and choose what you, suits you and your dog the best. Next up, we need to want to think about how to know what to use and what to use where. So basically, courses are made up of lines. So you want to create your dog's line around the course and make it as fast and smooth as possible. Now, each handling technique creates a different line and has a slightly different uh, reason you would use it. So we teach you what each of the handling techniques do. We teach you what the lines they do to create that. And then we also would help you out with you and your team to work out what would be the best option for you. And I find that when you do the training of these different techniques, it makes those decisions easy. So we have some really great guided courses that help you out with these. So we have uh, one guided course called 10 Techniques on One Jump, where we teach you the techniques all on one jump so that you start to learn how to do the handling and you don't need a lot of space or a lot of room to do it. And you and your dog can learn that technique together. And then we have another guided course where we put those techniques into a sequence so that you can practice running that sequence with the techniques in there so that you learn how to flow into and out of the techniques through a course. And then you would move up to doing some of the advanced guided courses, which I'm running at the moment, which is basically choosing and applying the different handling techniques where you practice using all the different handling techniques and we time the differences between them and really work out what suits you and your team best. And then I'm running one at the moment um, on advanced backyard sequences that will hopefully help you hone your techniques so that when you go out onto course, you can really start to have confidence in what you and your team can do together. So 
leaving you, I want you to have a think about when you're at the start of your agility career with your dog, I want you to think about where you want to start. And when you're thinking about where to start, I want you to think about where you want to end up. So if you want to be a world team member, then you really want to pay attention to the foundations and really work your foundations well so that you build that toolbox nice and strong to be able to carry all the different tools you're going to need to be able to become a team world team member if you're in it to have fun with your dog learn some cool tricks and have just a good time build great connection then the foundation games are great to play but you don't necessarily need to build that toolbox so strong because you're not going to want to carry all of those tools but you can have a, a nice foundation to be able to enjoy the game with your dog. And so I really want you to consider where you want to go with your dog and when doing that, where to start in your agility career. And so I hope you had a, um, a good think about the three steps to making a great agility career and building your agility toolbox. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we would absolutely love to be able to help you start building that agility toolbox and making a successful agility career. Thank you so much for listening.